Coyotes are out tonight. Welcome back everybody. The cylinder head reconditioning process for 1113 is about to commence. As you can see, I have a few pounds of cast iron on the bench. I'll explain what is what here. This is the original head that was on 1113 when we brought it home. You can tell by the heaved out pieces and the cracks and the breaks from the freezing that that poor engine endured. And as I've said before, we're basically writing this cylinder head off. It's well beyond any practical repair. Uh, we're gonna try and salvage the pre-combustion chambers out of it, and then that's gonna be it for that piece. We also have the valves and guides and springs already salvaged out of that. So that leads us to these other two cylinder heads. This is a, a parts unit here. Um, it has its rust issues, but actually got some pretty stand-up looking valves out of it. They need to be cleaned up and uh, resurfaced on the valve grinder to see what we have, but I am not entirely disappointed with the valves that came out of there. A decent fit on the guides yet too. And now we're at the end of the line, the third and last one. This is the cylinder head off of my grandpa's old cat, the first D2 I ever bought, 5J2115. Have not yet pulled valves out of this. I did do a valve job on this Shortly after I got that machine, I was you know, about 20 years old. I was just kind of doing the best that I could with what I had. I know the valves in here aren't great. Valve springs are actually close to close to new yet. I did uh, have to replace all of those. Half of those were broken, so I had a uh, brand new cat valve springs and that that probably have about 20 hours of operation on. So I'm thinking those are going to get reused again for 1113 for sure. Now to break down what we're looking at here for date codes. Bearing in mind that 1113 is a 1938 model year, first year of production for D2 and the D3400 diesel engine, we'll look at the date code that's on the cylinder head that was on that tractor when we brought it home. I see a LURL, which would translate to a 6-1-1946. So we can categorically say this is not the original cylinder head that was on 1113. This is a late generation D3400 cylinder head because it was not made till 1946. D3400 production ended in 47, so this is not the first gen tech stuff like we're used to seeing on 1113. Granted, this later head would still bolt onto that early block and work just fine. Form, fit, and function for the most part were all the same. Uh, it also has the 7B596 casting number, so definitely not first gen tech right here. So then I got to looking at the parts head. It also has that later 7B596 casting number and a UURE, which is 1-1 of 1943. So again, a cylinder head that would work, but it's not first generation stuff. It's a little bit later of a, of a build. So looking at 2115 cylinder head, I was happy to see it has the earlier 4B307 casting number on it and the date code is very faint. You have to get it in the light just right, but it is a UUULEO, which breaks down to 1116 of 1938. So we have the first gen tech right here, the early series cylinder head, which is a much better fit for the build date of 1113. Would have been the right, correct, and proper style head that would have originally been on that tractor. So at this point in time, this is the one that I would really like to get fixed up, fully reconditioned, and make work on 1113. Now, talking about first gen versus later cylinder heads for these uh, D3400s, really about the only difference I can see is this raised boss for the oil line fitting that would go in through here and oil all your valve train stuff um, on the first gen cylinder heads. It's kind of a shallow boss whereas the later ones both have a much more pronounced, larger diameter raised boss, a lot more material for that fitting. Aside from that, these are essentially all the same. So let's work on getting the valves out of 2115's old head. Like I said, this is gonna be a trip down memory lane for me. I had those out and kind of refreshed them about 20 years ago. I got my board already. Uh, holes drilled in it, 3 8 diameter, fits those valve stems pretty well, numbered, so I can at least keep them in order. I know which spot they came out of. All the tools I'm gonna need, a valve spring compressor, soft faced hammer, and a socket. First thing I'll do here, take that hammer and socket, just tap on those retainers on uh, the tops of the valves. Those keepers have a taper on them and they can really wedge in pretty tight. So this loosens that wedging action a little bit and just makes it easier for the valve spring compressor to work. So 
So now starting at the front, I'll position the valve spring compressor. There we go. Those keepers all fell out. So we'll release the tension. And you have the retainer, the inner spring, and the outer spring. And we can slide the valve out. And like I said, that's only about 20 hours of runtime. You can see the horrendous amounts of carbon that built up on that stem. Um, 2115 was getting pretty loose. You can uh, click here right about now and uh, go back and relive uh, all the memories of tearing that engine down and how darn loose those pistons were in those bores. But has a pretty good looking seat on there, I must say. Nice and wide, nice even contact all the way around. So I was able to seal those valves up a little anyhow. And now I just do the same thing over and over again. Work my way down the line. Pop that valve in the board and keep all the springs and everything around the stem. Ooh, a little bit of rust in that one. First one I've seen like that. Yeah, last one. All right, I got all the valves out and the seats really don't look that bad. I was just kind of worried about rust pitting, anything like that, but the time that uh, 2115 spent sitting really wasn't horrible on it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to catch this with the GoPro, I think we can. You can see a little bit of a glint, a little bit of a different glint in the light right about here off the end of the pick. I can still see the 45 degree seat face that I cut into it. I did a three angle seat on these. This was actually the first valve seat job I ever did. I cut the 45 degree face to get it to match the angle on the valve and then I did a sharper 60 degree on the inside to narrow the face from the bottom in and I did a shallower 30 on the outside to narrow it in from out there. The 30 is all covered in uh, carbon right now but I can still see that transition line right there from the 45 to the 60. That's like I said a real trip down memory lane. That was the very first valve job I ever did on a head you know like grinding seats and stuff like that and well, let me sh let me just show you how badly these valves were worn. I just put number one exhaust valve in. We'll take it out to full open position. Now, 15 thousandths is uh, max desired clearance between the valve and the guide. And you can see how, how loose that is. I mean, that's not 15 thousandths. I could probably measure that with a ruler. But like I said at the time, I was just doing the best I could with what I had, and what I had wasn't much. I could afford a new head gasket and a valve cover gasket, but just about everything else had to uh, just be reconditioned. Basically what I had, no new parts were obtained. So I know we're going to have to do a valve guide replacement in this head for sure. And if you replace the guides, you also have to retouch the seats because when you put a seat grinder, on a head that has worn guides, your mandrels for the uh, stones are basically just uh, tapered oversized uh, valve stems is pretty much what they are. And that allows you to go in and somewhat center up into a worn guide because guides wear all oblong. So where I cut these seats, it's probably a pretty good bet that they're no longer perfectly on center line with a brand new guide. So if I do guides, we'll have to refresh these seats. You don't want to grind these in too far because on diesels, Valve face recession is a big thing. The further in you grind those seats, the further in that valve drifts, the larger your combustion chamber gets, lowers your compression, can give you problems. We got specs that we can address with all that. But anyway, we got the valves out. Now to pull the guides, you can see I've done one of them already. 
and uh, the manual says you can drive these out, you can press them out. Trouble with pressing these out, these D3400 guides are in at a little bit of an angle. So we'll just set this little rule up. That's a straight 90, and actually those guides are canted in just a little bit. So that makes it a little more difficult for setting this head in a press and getting everything so you have a nice uh, nice straight down uh, pressing action on those things. And then you know, you're worrying about tensioning things. So what I do is, well, again, did some lathe work. I have this nice little remover sleeve right here that will actually surround the guide and sit down on that area where the valve spring rests just outside of that guide shoulder. I have a few other adapter pieces for it and I just use a 3 8 bolt and a nut. I'll show you how it works. So what I'll do is just take that bolt, shoot it up through the guide till it sticks out the other end. And I'll put the sleeve on. It's uh, large enough on the inside for the guide to pass right up through it. A little bit of a plug to go on the end. And I'll do some flat washers and I like to put a little bit of grease out on these things. It helps with the tension that is applied to them because uh, these guides are kind of tight at first. It, it takes a little bit to get them moving. So a little bit of grease doesn't hurt anything out there. And just uh, run the nut until it's hand tight. Make sure everything is well aligned. That looks good. And now we just start cranking pressure down. Basically this is just a puller and it keeps all of your pulling force pretty much isolated right around that guide. You're not going to stress the head. You shouldn't really inflict any damage upon it. Just about ready to break loose here. There we go. It's going a lot easier now. So basically what you do, you just keep cranking down on that nut until it pulls that guide up into the, uh, the center of this sleeve and then just take it out. There we go. There is the guide. Basically now I just take all of the uh, pulling adapters off of this, get the bolt out of the guide, put the bolt in the next one, continue on down the line until they're all out. All right, so now that the valves, springs, and guides are out, we just about have a completely disassembled cylinder head with the exception of pre-combustion chambers. And I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, these are the about the only thing on any Series D2 that worry me. Um, they, they either love you or they hate you. There's really no in-between. They are thread in. You can see where the nozzles are sticking out. In the combustion chambers, they are out a little bit past the head gasket surface. Um, oh, I'm just not gonna get into these quite yet tonight. Pre-combustion chambers are where cylinder head work on a on one of these old cat diesels can go off the rails in a hurry. I mean, stuff, your day can turn really bad in a short amount of time, depending on how things go. Uh, we're gonna get into that next time. Well, you can see these sitting here, but I'm not going to show you those yet, so don't look at them. That's all going to be for next time. We're going to get into that. Thank you for watching, everybody. Um, just a little bit of a warning. I am going to ask for your opinions, your advice, what have you, in the next episode. Still kind of on the fence about how much further I want to go with this cylinder head, but we will cover it in depth next time. I promise. Thanks for watching.